Yeah, as we reaction to the report on post-election violence in Zimbabwe is still continuing. Now, this week, a former president, uh, Halima Mutlante, released findings from a commission of inquiry into the matter where six people were killed after a military crackdown and uh, protests uh, this year. Now, the document states that the army used undue force and that firing of live ammunition at unarmed civilians was unjustifiable. And to discuss this further, we join now by Dr. Thompson uh, Chengeta, who is an international human rights law expert and joins me here in studio. Thanks for coming through. Thank you very much, Sakeli. Uh, Dr. Chengeta, firstly, uh, let's just get your uh, response, your overall impressions of this report. Um, first of all, I think uh, we do appreciate uh, the report or the commissioners making it clear at least that it was the government agents who were responsible for the death of six civilians, four of whom were actually shot in the back when they were fleeing from the said soldiers or state agents. Nevertheless, I um, should say with all due respect to the commissioners and actually some of the legal minds who were on the uh, commission, whom I do actually have respect for, there are certain things that are crucially lacking from the report and to the extent actually that it is really disappointing. The first, mm -hmm. uh, which I would want to mention, is the lack of human rights language in the report. Nowhere in the report, voluminous it is, does it mention anything to do with violation of rights. They do mention the killing of four civilians by state agents, which is a clear violation of the right to life. Nowhere in the report does it mention the aspect of uh, the right to life. Then the second issue which I find also disturbing and maybe also disappointing in the report is the fact that the commissioners seem to have misunderstood or misdirected themselves as far as the legal principles that are applicable when force is used during uh, uh, demonstrations. I'll give just two examples. It seems as if the concentration of the commissioners was on whether the deployment of the army was lawful or was necessary, so to say. Rather, the correct question would have been, was the use of lethal force or deadly force, so to say, necessary and justified? That is not the question which actually they focus on. Secondly, they also misdirected themselves when they talk of, uh, about proportionality on the use of uh, force when actually the use of force was indiscriminate in the first instance. The moment you say that the attack was indiscriminate, in other words, you are not distinguishing uh, uh, between the legitimate and non-legitimate targets, it means the attack itself is unlawful, so the question of promotionality doesn't arise. The third question, which is more important and fundamental in my view, is the aspect of responsibility. It appears in my mind that the report emphasizes the responsibility of non-state actors instead of this, uh, the government itself. When you're talking of the right to life or when you're talking of rights, it is the obligation of the state to protect the rights of the citizens. In this particular case, what was violated is the fundamental crucial right to life. And we have clear in the report that it was the state agents who actually took life. But there is no emphasis of the responsibility of, uh, of the state, so to say. What I want to mention, which I hope the government may take into consideration, is the aspect of what is known in law as command responsibility. Mm. It is not only about the foot soldier who shot the civilians or who murdered the civilians in, in cold blood. It is about their commander, right? And when you are in law, when you are saying command responsibility, this is how it works. A commander can be legally and criminally liable for the actions of their subordinates in two circumstances. First, when the commander knew or ought to have known that their subordinate was likely to commit crimes or was committing crimes and did nothing to stop them. Second, when the commander then knew or realized that the uh, subordinate had committed crimes, did nothing to punish that subordinate. Now, let's come to the facts of the Zimbabwean case. On the evidence submitted by the government itself, on 29 July, a day before the election, they already knew that there was a likelihood of these disturbances happening. 
There are letters which actually talk about that. Did they properly prepare for that eventuality? No, they didn't. Speaking of preparing properly, so um, are we, uh, can you just uh, talk us through the rules that, for example, govern policing in Zimbabwe, policing demonstrations in particular? Uh, thank you, uh, Sinkyo, that there are two forms of legal rules that are applicable. That is domestic rules and international uh, human rights law rules, which are the same. And this, particularly, we have to focus on the use of lethal force during de demonstrations. You may only use lethal force when policing if your intention is to protect another life which is in immediate danger. And you can only use lethal force as a last resort. So the question which you decide is not whether a particular demonstrator is being violent. That's not the question. It's whether at that particular moment and immediately they were posing a threat to another human life which you had to protect with lethal force. In other words, in all the human rights jurisprudence, they say that there shouldn't be any moment of deliberation. It's like as if someone is holding a gun to another citizen and you as a state, out of your obligation to protect that other citizen, then you have to take the life of the other one. Mm. If that situation doesn't exist, there can never be justification to take life. And in the case of Zimbabwe, there was no such a situation. And, and, and I'm just trying to push through here, uh, mm. Dr. Chengeta. Uh, let's talk about the extent of uh, human rights violations as well, because you lament uh, the lack of uh, the language that speaks to these human rights violations in the report. But uh, we're talking about uh, those who lost their lives. But what was the total extent of human rights violations during that time? A, a, a very good question, because there are various actually rights which were violated during the whole process. On the videos, even on the evidence of the commission itself, we see soldiers kicking civilians, you know, inhuman and degrading treatment happening on the streets of Zimbabwe. Nowhere in the report does it mention such kind of violations. And I'm saying it is the lack of that human, uh, human rights language in government official records that actually continue to undermine the protection of the rights uh, of the rights of Zimbabweans as it were. And the commission in that regard uh, is found lacking. And I, I just, just want, uh, if you may allow me, to rush to the other point which I didn't finish about why command responsibility is important. And I was talking about th that leg where I was saying why should the commanders, and when I'm say, saying commanders, I'm not only referring to the army commander which was on the ground, it goes up to the commander in chief that is President uh, Mnangagwa who authorized the deployment of, 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 those, uh, of those soldiers. Why are they responsible? They say on that particular day on 1 August, they knew more than 4,000 people were agitated on the streets. And they also say the police were overwhelmed. Why then would you deploy only 67 soldiers armed with live ammunition AK-47? The question which you have to inquire then in law is, wasn't, that, wasn't there reasonable foreseeability that with this kind of behavior, only 67 soldiers armed with live ammunition, that these crimes were going to be committed? And the third leg which you then ask is, even after the crimes have been committed, if a commander is not to be responsible, they have to punish the, their subordinate. Did that happened in Zimbabwe, not necessarily what actually happened. During the commission era, what actually happened that we see the commanders trying to absolve their subordinates, saying it wasn't them. And the second aspect is just a day before the release of this particular report, we see actually President Mnangagwa, the commander-in-chief, promoting one of the ground commanders from a general to major general. In that regard, I think it makes a mock of the whole uh, Montante uh, report or commission as far as uh, the, the, the idea mm. of accountability is Dr. concerned. Uh, Dr. Chengeta, we're out of time, but what should happen now in your view? In my view, uh, the first thing which I, I think I would want to maybe to comment, at least on the part of the commission, is that they were able actually to, to, to comment on actual of, uh, electoral reforms, which is very important. But the way forward, I think what is needed in Zimbabwe is sincerity. This politics of deceit, this politics of saying we can be able to move forward, I've always asked the people to say that. When you say we need, need national healing and reconciliation, ask yourself the question sincerely. Will this really ever work 
when the alleged perpetrator is still in power. Because the idea of reconciliation, say for example in South Africa, after apartheid era, is where the victim at least will have to see the once powerful perpetrator out of power, and then they're saying we're talking to them. But if the alleged perpetrator is still in power, the question is, is it really possible to what extent can we be able to have that uh, reconciliation statement? And I would want to conclude with this statement. As far as reconciliation is concerned, or the tactics which at least the government is uh, adopting as far as reconciliation is concerned, it is as if we uh, always use this uh, metaphor that shots were fired literally and uh, 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 proverbially and asked the citizens of Zimbabwe caught the bullets. What the government is attempting to do at the current moment is to try and stitch the wounds without removing the bullet. And I would say, such is a flawed healing process. There is need for sincerity as far as, 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 far as this issue is concerned. Well, thank you so much to Dr. Thompson Chengeta, who is an international human rights law expert, talking to us about post-election violence in Zimbabwe and that report that was released earlier this week.